Hello and welcome to this presentation on claiming CMCs in the field of radionuclide metrology. So this presentation is for national metrology institutes or designated institutes who wish to claim a CMC and it is a summary of the international rules for completing CMC tables. References to the rules are shown in the presentation in the format shown and there is general guidance on using the key comparison database available on the BIPM website. Please contact the chair of your local regional metrologies organisation's technical committee uh, for further advice. Once you have logged into the KCDB, the first step is to select radioactivity as the branch and then you enter a code for the claim and the code has the RMO, the acronym for your particular RMO, followed by RAD for radioactivity, then the acronym for your institute, and a four-digit code starting with the number two. And you can select any code that you like for that. And you can, if you wish, add a link to your website for more information on the service. Then the next step is to enter details of the quantity, the medium and the source for the service you're offering from the drop-down lists. It's very important to use only the items that are shown on the next slide. There are other options shown on the drop-down lists but that's only for historical reasons. And I'll give you some examples of the typical parameters to choose later. So this slide shows you the allowed quantity, medium and source codes that you can use. And surface emission rate by the way means emission into 2 pi and efficiency is included so that you can claim CMCs for the calibration of instruments such as ionization chambers, gamma ray spectrometers or contamination monitors. And so here are some examples. So if you wish to claim a CMC for a cesium-137 standardized solution, you would select activity as the quantity, liquid as the medium, and the source would be a single radionuclide source. On the other hand, a mixed radionuclide soil reference material, again, you would choose a quantity of activity, but the medium in this case would be reference material, soils or sediments, and it you would pick a multi-radionuclide source. So the next step is to include a brief description of how the service is performed. So some, there are some examples here. You might be carrying out the measurements by liquid scintillation counting. You could be using a high purity germanium spectrometer or an ionization chamber. The next step is to enter the unit which you get from the drop down list that appears and then enter the minimum value for the service the lowest activity that you can offer and after that enter the maximum value for the service that you can offer for both the minimum and maximum please enter only the significant digits Next, it's important to enter the instrument or the artifact that's being calibrated. For calibration service in radioactivity, for example, it might be calibration of a high purity germanium spectrometer, an ionization chamber, or surface contamination monitor. If there are relevant international standards, ISO standards, to refer to, please then record them in the next dialog box. For example, ISO 8769 is relevant for measuring the emission of surface contamination sources. Here we add the radionuclide in the format shown in the slide. This is slightly different from the previous approach in the KCDB where the radionuclide appeared as a parameter. 
in the new KCDB the radionuclide has a specific field. You can only enter one radionuclide. Mo multi radionuclide sources need one CMC per radionuclide but later the CMCs are linked using a group identifier. Please also add further details of the type of the source, for example the chemical form, the source geometry, the specifics of the matrix. You can also add further information such as the volume or dimensions of the source or any information that you think might be of help to the reviewer. Uncertainties should be stated as relative uncertainties in percent using a coverage factor of 2 which is equivalent of course to a 95% confidence level. One important thing to note is the uncertainty that you should use should be the lowest that can be achieved under normal conditions. So you, you do not quote the best uncertainty that you could reach in the ideal case but what you can do for this particular service normally. In this next section you tell the reviewer about the national reference standard to which the service refers. If it's a primary standard for example it might be something like 4 pi beta gamma coincidence counting. If it's a secondary standard you're referring to it could be a, an ionization chamber but you should indicate all the reference standards that you use to ensure that the service is traceable. You should tell the reviewer about the comparison exercises to support the claim. If you click on the plus sign, you'll get a drop down list and you select the relevant comparison exercise from the list that appears. You can use, of course, the measurement methods matrix to support provide support from a comparison using another radionuclide. And in the bottom part of this section you can add any comments here. For example any constraints that there may be on the service when it's available through the year or something like that. The text in that part is published with the CMC on the key comparison database. The information you need to enter here indicates where you get the traceability to a primary standard from. If your national standard is a primary standard in its own right, all you need to do here is enter the acronym for your own NMI. But if it's not a primary standard and you're using an instrument which was calibrated using a standard from another NMI, enter the acronym for the NMI from which traceability was obtained. In the next box is the group identifier. So this is a text code for you to choose which you can enter to link CMCs for reference materials containing several radionuclides. You should leave it blank if it is for a single radionuclide. Here you can add the titles or references to publications to support the claim other than reports that are already published in the KCDB and you can use the measurement methods matrix to identify relevant comparison exercises. And please also upload copies of the publications and evidence of the RMO approval of your quality management system. Finally, you can add comments here that will be seen by the reviewer. So if you click there, a dialog box will appear and you can enter your comments. For example, you may wish to flag up to the reviewer that the main change in this has been to adopt new nuclear decay data. But any information that you think will be useful to the reviewer, you can add here. So thank you for listening and we hope that you found the presentation useful.